by Giant FM, and it is time for the Woodlawn Hospital Report. Things have changed a little bit since our last hospital report, and I'm joined by the brand new COO of Woodlawn Hospital, Brad Rogers. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. Thank you. How are you doing today? You know what? We're having a good day. It's you know it's that day before uh, Thanksgiving, and so we're we're working through all the business aspects and probably planning for a little time with family and friends. Yeah, I uh, I already know how long I need to cook the turkey and everything. I'm ready to go. We're going to be uh, good by 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, nice. So. Nice. So you're going to be up very early, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to getting up about quarter after five at the very latest. So I'm like, I'll just get up at the same time and start everything. Why not? Sure. Excellent. So uh, like I mentioned, a lot of things have changed uh, since our last Woodlawn Hospital report. And uh, welcome to doing the radio side of things. And Thank you. Figured we'd... Uh, let you introduce yourself and kind of go over what we've got to go over. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys and thank you RTC for all of your hard work and making sure this happens every month. Um, you know, my name is Brad Rogers. I've been at Woodlawn Hospital for 16th year now working okay. on it. Came here in 2006. Um, came on as the director of the Rehabilitative Services Department, uh, physical therapist by uh, initial training and then uh, I went back to school several times and got a few additional degrees in public management, public affairs and finance, um, and then finished up a doctorate degree in uh, physical therapy as well. Um, have been with Woodlawn that time doing various roles. Uh, a couple years ago, I added in cardiopulmonary and, rebuild, or cardiopulmonary and respiratory services, um, being the director of those as well. And then early this spring, became the executive director for all the physician practices at the hospital. Um, and then uh, added this new role in uh, COO uh, yesterday, actually, uh, from an official standpoint. And so, always happy to do anything we can for Woodlawn. It's an amazing hospital uh, in an amazing community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm glad that you know you've been here for so long, and it's not like you hired somebody off of the street to come in and do your position. So you're used to how things are running, and uh, I don't think we'll we'll see changes, of course. Sure. We always see a lot of changes, but they won't be completely drastic. Woodlawn's still going to be Woodlawn going forward. You know, the board is an amazing board who has nothing but the community's best interest uh, in mind and at heart. So Woodlawn's going to be Woodlawn. Uh, we're going to keep moving forward and keep progressing and adding new services and, and uh, serving the community like we have for, for the last you know 40 to 60 years. Um, we'll keep getting those four and five star ratings. Um, from CMS and the federal government, and, and we'll, we'll always be right there as a leader in the area. All right. Now, um, you mentioned that you officially became the COO yesterday, and that was because there was a board meeting yesterday. Yeah, we had a board meeting yesterday and some, some topics at the board meeting. Uh, one, um, the new organizational chart, which changed my status into the COO position. Um, and, you know, we're going to work towards uh, filling that CEO role over the next uh, month and that's you know obviously a paramount uh, thought process for the board. Um, currently our interim CEO uh, Paul McKinney is doing an amazing job and, and helping us all you know kind of move towards that mission statement that we always drive towards and um, she's going to assist the board and and getting those candidates along with our HR director and uh, you know field those and, and sort those in a way that we can come up with the best best option for the board. All right. So, Sounds like a uh, great ordeal going on uh, at Woodlawn Hospital. You know, change sometimes is it's tough. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're all creatures of habit. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of extremely positive things that we're looking forward to in the next year. Um, from a financial standpoint, we'll quickly go over that. Um, there's some good things to note, even though, you know, 2021 and still being in the pandemic is a little lower financially than we would all like. Right. Um, we haven't gotten back up to those 2019 pre-pandemic numbers, but in all the key areas, we are seeing improvements where we are this year as compared to last year. Okay. So we'll quickly go through that, Paul, and then we'll kind of go on to a couple other topics. Yeah. So for the month end of uh, October 2021, our total patient days were 250, down a little bit from our projected of 314, but about 18% higher than we saw the same time last year. Hey, that's great. That's a nice thing. Uh, same thing with admissions, down uh, about 15 admissions, um, but still up 23, 24% from last year. So um, not the numbers we were hoping for for the month 
from the admission side on the inpatient, but making progress towards our pre-pandemic numbers. Right. Um, and then that follows over year to date as well. We're still uh, a little bit lower in October than we had liked from a budget standpoint, um, at 2,309 days for the year, um, but up from the 2,261 from last year at the same time. So some of those areas to me are very positive. We're headed in the right direction. If we go to physician visits, again, a little lower than we would have liked to at the physician uh, level, but 5% higher than we were this time last year. That's so we're great. slowly making back some of those areas and getting back up to the pre-pandemic numbers that uh, we're used to seeing in 17, 18, and 19. Um, for the individual month of October, we had about 13 million in total patient revenue. Um, minus all the deductions and the operating costs, we end up with a, about a $3.2 million net income. Now, that is with some additional monies that we were able to transfer over from our COVID dollars. Right. You know, that process of making sure, you know, our CFO, Mr. Kraft, making sure that we're applying those back to the uh, operating statistics and the finances when we're allowed to, um, once those approvals come through. So those have all came through and that added on quite a bit of revenue for that month. Um, that means year to date, um, even with a couple months that were a little slower than projected, we're running right now at about a $3.1 million year to date profit. Okay. Um, would like to be a little bit better just because of some of those months that were down, but still I think moving in the right direction. Right, and you know, um, I always was telling Mr. Alley that uh, you guys got that um, money from the government to help out and I loved how you guys handled that because there was no direction yet on anything so you put it in an account and you just let it sit there until you figured everything out versus going out spending it to keep your numbers where they needed to be uh, you guys took the loss where the loss was at and you guys in my opinion came out ahead yeah Mr. Alley and Mr. Kraft did two really uh, wonderful things for the hospital at that point in time which was uh, we had two different kinds of money coming in. We had the, the COVID-19 CARES Act funds. Right. And then we had also the prepaid funds from Medicare. Um, we received them both, but we immediately decided to send back the Medicare prepay money um, for the same reason. Why spend money that's not necessarily yours yet? Yeah. Um, that was money that we were going to get ahead of time for services that we would render down the road. Um, they decided to send that back. Um, and then we held the other money until we were absolutely sure that we could apply it properly and not have any issues or penalties or have to send anything back. Yeah. So we're finally getting to that point. Um, there is a CARES 4, um, so there is some money um, potentially coming out uh, um, as we speak over this next year. We're not sure what that is or what that means, but we'll probably head with the same logic. Let's not get our cart in front of the horse there and let's make sure that we know exactly what we're able to use that for before we spend it. Absolutely. I think yeah. that's such a great idea. and very smart business on your guys' end. Yeah, I think they've done a great job over the last year and a half during this pandemic of, of keeping us above water. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of hospitals that are doing very difficult financially, and, and I think we've all been hit significantly, but um, those decisions have really helped us out. Right. Yeah. Um, a couple things from, uh, you know, a non-financial standpoint on things that are going on at the hospital that I think are, well, uh, uh, wellness type services for the community and just great to mention. Um, the community is going to be having a health fair uh, provided by Woodlawn Hospital on December 1st. So next week from nine o'clock until 11.30 a.m. Um, there will be a community health fair at the Fulton County Community Center. There will be free uh, health screenings for blood pressure, glucose, oxygen saturations, and doing some risk assessments for things like heart disease and stroke. Um, early heart attack care, some education, some healthy eating ideas, um, smoking cessation ideas. So please, if that's something you're interested in, um, give us a call, 574-224-1170. Uh, Again, 574-224-1170. And um, get in there and, and get checked out. That's important for us during this time of year. Yeah, now is that something you have to register ahead of time for? Or can you just show up during that time frame? It is free to the public. Um, I'm sure they would love a little bit of information ahead of time if they're going to get a big surge of people so that they can make sure that we have uh, you know, all the things necessary for them. But um, no, I think you can show up between 9 o'clock and 11.30. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, you know, as we were talking about the pandemic, and, you know, we're still kind of 
We're still right in there. Yeah. We're still right in there. Um, Woodlawn started a couple months ago with the monoclonal antibody treatments. Okay. Um, we had not done that. We were starting to see a, a big increase in that demand um, from the patients in the community and from the surrounding communities. And I just really want to do a shout out to that nursing department um, because they stepped up, hired an individual directly for that services. Uh, the pharmacy director coordinated and got in all the required medicines. And we started that up a couple months ago and now we've exceeded 80 treatments. And that's so awesome. that's, that's a great thing for the community and a, and a really quick reaction time that they were able to get that up and running. So uh, shout out to those, uh, those individuals. Um, one of the questions that's came up and we see from time to time as patients are coming into the hospital is there's still a little confusion on where to come into the hospital. Right. So making sure that the community is aware, we, we still only have one entrance open. That is the emergency room entrance. So that is the entrance as you're facing the hospital that is on the right side that says emergency room. Okay. The visitor's entrance is closed. And I say that because I just want people to be able to park closer to where they come into the hospital <laughs> to not have to walk as far as the weather's getting worse. Um, you know, we, we do have concierge services or valet, but they're not there all hours. So I want you guys to be as close to the hospital when you come in as possible. So remember again, only the entrance at the emergency room is open at this time. All right. Okay. Um, COVID-19 mandate, let's do a quick talk. Yes, yes, so, I've heard about this. Woodlawn Hospital is committed to doing everything to make sure that we take care of the community. Um, and sometimes outside requirements pop up. And so with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services has a final rule, and, and I'll give you this wonderful rule number. It's 42 CFR 485.725. Yeah. And that is the federal government's designation numbers for the COVID-19 mandate that applies to all hospital and healthcare facilities that receive Medicare and Medicaid dollars. And it says that all facilities receiving these dollars must establish a policy ensuring that all eligible staff have received the first dose of a two-dose COVID-19 vaccine or a one-dose COVID-19 vaccine prior to providing any care, treatment, or services by December 6, 2021. Now what that really means additionally is that we have to have a process in place to make sure that we're monitoring it to make sure that we are um, we have an appropriate exemptions policy that's approved by the the federal government and i just wanted to let everybody know woodlawn is doing everything in their power to make sure that we're complying with all of the federal regulations and amazing the job that they are doing they're doing it in a professional respectful manner like we all expect yeah. Um, during a very difficult time for a lot of uh, a lot of employees and a lot of community members. So we just want to let everybody know we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're, we're taking care of all the patients that this that this community has. So. All right. Um, we were talking a little bit off air and uh, I wanted to mention this because a lot of people don't realize this, but even Woodlawn Hospital has been hit with a staff shortage. Yeah, the staff shortage is real. I mean, you, we can go back roughly two years, even prior to the pandemic. Um, if you look at some of the areas that we were really trying to stimulate some, some new hires and you know nursing and, and radiology, and those had been going on prior to the pandemic. And, and the pandemic has is, uh, is exacerbated that pretty significantly. Uh, yes, I mean, please, if you are a healthcare provider and, and you're looking, uh, get online and look at all of our openings. We have some openings in nursing and and radiology and, and our billing department and um, a lot of openings throughout the hospital. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, it's something that's real. It's hit us across the nation. Um, as you look to other outside uh, hospital corporations, you will see the number of days that they've had to close units, that they've had to shift staff, um, that they uh, weren't even able to provide a service. Um, they're doing a really good job at Woodlawn to make sure that hasn't happened yet. So, and we'll keep doing that. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that even with everything going on, you guys are still, for the most part, operating as normal. Yeah, we have not shut down any units. Uh, we haven't had to have any of those uh, challenges for the community thus far. And, and our plan is to continue to, to move forward doing what we need to to keep everything moving as smooth as possible. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, Brad, thank you so much for uh, stopping by and talking with us today. Uh, yeah. 
Greatly Thanks, appreciate it and um, look forward to talking to you again soon. Absolutely. I want to tell everybody happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, uh, the board and our community for all the support you guys have given to us in the past. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you as well, Brad. Thank you.